With all of the cards now released in Rise of the Floodborne, there's many mechanics that we can now test across all different colors. In this video, we're obviously taking a look at Emerald Steel. This is a very popular color combination that's all over the lab right now. And there's essentially three variations of uh, this color combination that you could play. One is a bounce oriented version, probably the least popular. Another one is one focused around the new green beast, dealing damage to your opponent with steel cards and readying the beast to quest or challenge multiple times. And then the third variation is this one here, which is probably the most popular. And that is the one focusing around discarding cards with the new emerald cards, getting advantage off of the Prince John from that, and then using steel to deal damage to characters on board to maintain board control as well as hand control from the emerald cards. What we're going to utilize here is pretty much the best opener that you can probably have. Not only did we go first, so that means we're on the play. We also had a two drop which into a Prince John on turn three into a sung or a character that can sing a sudden chill which means they discard and we draw. Discard off the Sudden Chill, we draw off of Prince John. Very, very powerful engine if you get it set up, especially early game when you're on the play, because it means that your opponent is essentially going to run out of resources too quickly. They can't keep up with their ink, their board, and their hand before Prince John just absolutely generates an obscene amount of advantage from you, even if you only get off like two or three discard effects. And that's exactly what you're gonna see here. Cause I could go for the hypnotize and just draw two and again, force my opponent to discard. But instead I'm going to kind of force them to expend any removal they have on this Daisy Duck. Otherwise this Daisy Duck is gonna just win the game for me cause it's gonna quest for two force the opponent to discard, I'm going to draw, and then whatever they have whatever they have left in their hand is going to get hypnotized. So Daisy Duck does force out the removal, so it trades one for one. They have two cards left in hand. They've already inked, one ink available. They can't do anything left with the two cards left in their hand. So we instantly go for the hypnotize here, draw two off of the one discard, um, because Prince Sean draws one, hypnotize draws one as well. We're going to ink the Beast Mirror because clearly we're not going to be running out of cards anytime soon. And then we're going to drop the captain hook and pass turn. The opponent essentially has to dump their hand and play in top deck mode uh, because not only do we have another hypnotize here, but yeah, any any other like Daisy Duck here or any other discard is just going to net us even more advantage. So the hypnotize does take out their final card. We draw two off of it. We can see what they've discarded in the graveyard. And uh, yeah, I think it was an inkable card. So the fact that they didn't ink and they skipped on that ink trying to hold their last card was really a misplay because you should always assume that the Prince John deck has a way for you to discard. Um, however, despite me talking about how good this deck has been and you, what you can see on screen here, it does have one fatal weakness. It has, it has a couple, but this is definitely one of the more apparent ones in that I basically have no way to deal with um, very beefy characters. So a Tiana, while it may look small on board, the resist plus two is a is a effect that I really can't deal with. I basically need a big Cinderella in order to start chipping away at it. Um, and a big Cinderella can obviously get removed with any kind of removal, like a Dragonfire, Let It Go, Hades, um, Maleficent Dragon, which can all be top deck. But the issue is you need the ink to play them and you need to top deck them, right? And so in this situation, my opponent is so far behind that use, using Beast Mirror, you're going to pay three to, to draw and then you can't do anything. And leaving that card in your hand is a detriment because Tiana's ability to prevent me from playing action mean, ha, can only be used when you have no cards in hand and you have a card in your hand, which means if I drew a sudden chill or hypnotize, I would instantly gain plus like three off of it because I have two Prince Johns on the field. Um, it's absolutely insane once you get this set up. The opponent knows they can't really do anything. As soon as they start questing, the Tinkerbell is going to generate so much advantage. They did top deck a let it go though, and that's very useful. But all I know is as soon as I get that Cogsworth off the field and I drew a smash to get it off the field right there, now I can start questing with everything because the Tiana can't actually take out anything being at one strength and the hook will trade into anything that it tries to destroy because it's already has it already has one damage on it from the Tinkerbell. So I'm like, I can start pressuring game here going from six lore up to, I think, okay, just 11 um, because for some reason, Prince John also quests for two, which is kind of broken. But even if the Captain Hook that the opponent has on field challenges a Prince John, my other one lives and uh, they lose their Captain Hook. So we still have lethal on board next turn and that's still a GG. Um, Prince John is probably a little too powerful having ward and being a 1-2. It probably should have been a 1-1 quest for one or just not have ward. 
Um, but regardless, this is the deck and uh, it's pretty strong if you're not prepared for it. It does have some weaknesses, like I said, but overall it's going to win you a lot of games if you make it.